February 17, 2017, Friday of the sixth week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the book of Genesis. The whole world spoke the same language, using the same words. While the people were migrating in the east, they came upon a valley in the land of Shinar and settled there. They said to one another, Come, let us mold bricks and harden them with fire. They used bricks for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the sky, and so make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we shall be scattered all over the earth. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower that they had built. Then the Lord said, If now, while they are one people, all speaking the same language, they have started to do this, Nothing will later stop them from doing whatever they presume to do. Let us then go down, and there confuse their language, so that one will not understand what another says. Thus the Lord scattered them from there, all over the earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why it was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the speech of all the world. It was from that place that he scattered them all over the earth. The Word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm The response is, Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. The Lord brings to naught the plans of nations. He foils the designs of peoples. But the plan of the Lord stands forever, the design of his heart through all generations. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Blessed the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen for his own inheritance. From heaven the Lord looks down, he sees all mankind. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. From his fixed throne he beholds all who dwell on the earth, he who fashioned the heart of each, he who knows all their works. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus summoned the crowd with his disciples and said to them, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and that of the gospel will save it. What profit is there for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? What could one give in exchange for his life? Whoever is ashamed of me and of my words, in this faithless and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. He also said to them, Amen, I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see that the kingdom of God has come in power. The Gospel of the Lord. February 17th, Friday of the sixth week in Ordinary Time. The first reading comes from Genesis 11, 1-9. We hear about how people decide to build a tower that will reach the heavens. Now, in ancient Babylon, there were towers like these, the ziggurat, and they were considered a staircase for the gods to be able to come down and dwell in the temple that the people had built at the base of that tower. Well, the intention for these people is to build a tower that reaches the heavens to have power over the gods. And God is not thrilled with this idea, so he confuses the language of the people. The confusion of the language is seen as a punishment. The people will no longer be able to collaborate with each other. Language, which should be a source of unity, something that brings us together, something that enables us to communicate with each other, now becomes a curse that it separates us, it it hinders us from collaborating with each other. In fact, in the scene in Acts of the Apostles on Pentecost Sunday, this punishment will be healed. The disciples will be able to speak in their own language, and everybody will understand as if the disciples had spoken in the native tongue of those people. The Gospel is from Mark 8, 34-9-1. 
Jesus speaks about the fact that not only does he have to suffer death, but the disciples are called to take up their crosses and follow him. Now Jesus has not yet died on the cross. Why would he use that as an image of sacrifice? And the answer is, is that this was the typical way to die a terrible death. That this was the punishment that Romans would impose upon any of the Jewish people who were to die. And in fact, in Jesus' own lifetime, there were many people who died in the next village over when there was a rebellion. Thousands were crucified. So it would be a typical image that would be used at the time of Jesus. Following Jesus is not about what we're going to get out of it, but rather what we're going to give. And we've been called to give of ourselves, and we shouldn't be ashamed of Jesus and his words. Jesus, at the end of this passage, speaks about the fact that many are standing here who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God come in power. Now, what was he referring to? It's possible he's referring to his death and resurrection. That's already the dawning of the kingdom upon the earth. Or it's possible that he's referring to the end of the world. Because remember, Jesus himself says that he doesn't know when the end of the world is. Did he expect it to occur within his lifetime or shortly after his death? It's not clear. It is clear, however, that the resurrection, in fact, is the dawning of the end of the world. Because the ancients believed that when people rose from the dead, it was a sign of the end of the world, the day of the Lord. And when Jesus rose from the dead, that was already the fulfillment of that idea. In fact, that's why early Christians believed that it wasn't even worth getting married because the end of the world was at hand. We had to dedicate ourselves to the things of the Lord. And that is still true today. The end of the world is at hand. It might be our own personal end. It might be the end of the world. We don't know how much time we have. Today is the day that we should convert our ways and die to ourselves so that we can live with Christ. And may God bless us.